Welcome to Framework Fortune Crypto and welcome back all you amazing individuals in the Framework Fortune and God's Unchained community. I'm your host Ben and normally I would have done some live streaming this weekend of the God's Unchained Weekend Ranked but because I've been having issues with the streaming software which have almost got resolved we should be good to go for this following week for all of God's live streams as well as other live streams but I did record some footage of the gameplay and we're going to do a little end of the weekend ranked here analysis so I started off in mythic and I ended up going 12 of 25 if you look right back here at the beginning of the weekend I actually took a dip out of mythic when I was trying to get my death deck in order I've been doing a little bit of uh, testing since then and I have whipped up a nice little Amazon nature deck that I'll be showing here in the following week as long as some things don't get nerfed because there are a couple of things I think are going to get nerfed after this weekend event number one we'll hop into the deck real quick just because this is the easiest way to get to it the Bark Sworn Hunter damaging a random enemy character. That character phrasing is very important. That means that it can hit a god. This thing has been a nightmare in weekend ranked all weekend for anybody who's played against it. Uh, I played majority of Nubian heirloom death but i did do some a lot, quite a bit of testing so far with nature amazon and i've had the bark sworn hunter used against me and i've used it against people i have a feeling it's going to get nerfed and say enemy creature so that way it doesn't directly attack a god this is an extremely strong card for a common maybe if it was a legend a legendary and it was one of i could see that but yeah, maybe not. Maybe it doesn't get uh, nerfed at all. We'll see. And then, of course, the other nerf I see coming is the Prime Refractor nerf, which it has dropped in price. Of course, all the prices have dropped across the NFT market of Gods Unchained because Ethereum and Gods token have pulled back quite a bit. On this side of the screen is Ethereum. So far, Ethereum is trying to rebound, but we have a lot of news headlines, a lot going on around the globe. So we'll see when the futures open up here tonight, what starts happening with all the markets. But Gods took a nasty dip down into that 75 cent area, which I was saying 90 cents and HH Trader was saying 75 cents and it looks like H was right. But if it doesn't rebound here, we could go all the way down to 50 cents. So do be aware of that it does look like it's trying to rebound as long as Ethereum can bounce and try to push back up over 3,000, then we should see gods get back over a dollar just off of that. But in the vice versa scenario that Ethereum doesn't hold and it cracks, well then Ethereum is going to probably go into a bear market which means the majority of all coins will go into a bear market which means gods could get down to 50 cents maybe even lower so that is where we're at as far as the market analysis goes very important that ethereum holds up for gods and imx since both of them are on ethereum which imx still is not down at the low at all yet still Trying to hold that 150 did have a little dip to 130, but getting bought right back up, and it's currently at 149 right now. So IMX seemingly holding a little stronger than Gods, which is not a surprise as there's a whole lot more happening with the development of Immutable X. Of course, we'll have a crypto update tomorrow on the channel. So we'll dive more into that then. As far as the Nubian Rush goes, I'm not exactly sure what they can nerf because Priestess of Takat is Trial of the Gods. So she cannot be nerfed. That set is already locked. There's now a lot of one mana Nubians. I don't know if they will be trying to nerf the Nubians like Raving Necromancer, which is a core card. That could be 
a potential nerf, maybe taking that minus one health from your opponent's god off. Vile Reavers, I'm not even sure what you could do there, because even if you lower their health, the whole purpose is you want them to die pretty quick, so uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you can do about those, really. Wretched Vanguard could still get some type of nerf and, and might, but those are the Anubians that can get nerfed, whereas the main kind of problem is Priestess. And maybe the Pharaoh's Heirloom, that would be another card that could get nerfed. That may be where the biggest nerf comes in if they nerf it. So let's actually check and see, because I haven't checked yet, what, are, what is the top performing deck so far in the weekend ranked? Because it is still Sunday, there is a little bit of time left. So looking at the player stats, the number one person in weekend rank now is Salty Crackers. Let's take a look at his deck. He went 22 and 25. Yeah, with Heirloom Death, 38 wins and 5 losses, 88% win rate. That's why I'm thinking we may see some type of nerf to Heirloom Death. And let's see what he's running. Pretty okay. He's got some interesting stuff in there. See the Necromancer, the Vile Reaver, the Wretched Vanguard. The rest of this is pretty basic stuff. Skull Scepter at a 2 of. That was a nice call. Uh, I ended up putting Skull Scepter as a 1 of in my deck. When I made that change with a few other changes, I started seeing a higher win percentage. 2 Reach in the Black, of course. 2 Lead of the Dead. I have been running Neferu off and on, experimenting with her in the Anubian Heirloom Death, and she's always a great option. I haven't put in any Apocalypse now, but apparently that is working really well for him. The weekend rank's not done yet, but let's check a couple more people and see. This guy looks like he went with Heirloom Death as well, with an 83% win rate on that deck. Number three, we've got... Oh, interesting. We have Guild Zoo Deception. He went 22 of 25, getting a nice little pull in Mythic. Three Mortal Judgment Legendary packs coming. Let's check this out. Now, that's something in my pre-analysis that I said to watch out for. There could be some Deception decks sprinkled in there that could cause some problems. Well, he's got one Patient Pickpocket, two Shadow Step Backstabbers. Yeah, that looks good. Two of the new Beguiling Blade. Still in stuff. Umber Arrow, great card to counter. Priestess of Takat, because if you get her on your side of the field and kill her with Umber Arrow and she goes into your void, then the death deck is not going to be able to get that Priestess back at any time in the game unless they have some special card to do it. Two Blade Borrow, another Strength Nerfer. A Bound by her will at a two of. That's another card that could pull Priestess over to his side of the board. Two X Lethargy Mage, continuing that trend. Two Cutthroat Insights, another strong card. I ran into a few Deception decks. My wife and her Deception deck was able to throw off a couple of those Dralimar Magic Combos and the Anubian Rush deck by grabbing those cards at five mana out of people's hand, like Land of the Dead or Dralimar or the Primer Factor. So Cutthroat Insight right now was a very nice meta call at a two of. Then Double Diller, making your opponent lose cards again. Rapture Dance, Board Control. The rest of this is just strong board control with two Wither Fingers, two Guild Enforcers, Kaya Conduit of Gods. Remember from Friday, I was saying this card was going to see some play in something. This card was too strong not to be played by something. And then two Demogorgons. And then that new Viking. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting choice he put in there. Helm of the Spear of Life. Now, I did not see that coming. So, very interesting deck there. Shout out to Libero. I think is how you say it. Libero or Libero. I don't know, but shout out to this uh, person with their really nice performing Deception deck. Having such a great meta call to counter the meta. Very, very nice Call. So let's see what the most popular archetype was across all, and it was Control Nature, Aggro Nature, Aggro War, Midrange Nature, Control Magic, Aggro Light, and surprisingly, not as much Heirloom Death, only 4% overall. I think as we move this up in rankings, we'll see a switch there, so Nature's still just staying prevalent, staying strong. 
Let's see, there we go. Once you get up into the G plus to Mythic, you can see a lot of the popularity was played with Heirloom Death, 9%. That may just be a Mythic. Now, there was a good bit in Diamond and the Gold rankings, but 15.5% of Mythic was Heirloom Death. So, very, very prevalent. But we add in the G plus to Mythic rankings, the most popular nature being number one, aggro light being number two, and heirloom death being number three. So nature, light, and deception, followed by control magic. Pretty accurate pre-weekend ranked analysis, I would say. So now on to the gameplay portion of the video. There's not a whole lot of games. I just picked out the top three games that I thought were the most interesting of all the recorded footage I had from this weekend rank and of course I wasn't recording myself as I was recording that I was doing other things so there will be some nice little music for you to jam out to you while you check out those three games. On to the gameplay.
with the enemy think that it was meant to be living in a time where disease is on every screen i won't let them fester me i know most are festering negativity is a plague for the mentally 